Hello biology class. Welcome back to another lecture. This is lesson five of the immunity unit uh, titled viruses and cancer. So uh, we talked a lot about viruses and bacteria. We talked about how viruses um, actually hijack the uh, DNA machinery in your own cells uh, to reproduce. And because of this, viruses are um, linked to cancer. Not all viruses, but some viruses can later on cause a situation where cancer can develop. So it is really important, uh, even more important, to get vaccinated against certain viruses so that you don't get them and you don't spread them. So let's talk about that. Uh, viruses and cancer. Viruses work by inserting themselves into the DNA of the host uh, in, in, I should say in, huh, in order to make more virus particles. Um, essentially it hijacks the DNA machinery. Cancer is a disease that results from the mutation or alteration of DNA. So these viruses, when they hijack the machinery, sometimes alter DNA in a non-beneficial way. So because viruses affect DNA of host cells, viruses are known to contribute to several different types of cancer. So viruses use the DNA to uh, reproduce and DNA, when it's damaged, causes cancer. So that's how those two are linked. The first type that we're going to talk about is HPV or human papillomavirus and cervical cancer. Uh, hu uh, human papillomavirus is a type of virus that can cause warts. It can cause them in many different places on the body. Um, some warts just grow on skin, but others caused by human papillomavirus grow in mucous membranes like inside the mouth, uh, the throat, uh, on the penis or vagina. Uh, some types of human papillomavirus can be spread through sexual contact. And at least a dozen of these HPV, vi HPV uh, viruses, I shouldn't say that because that's saying virus twice, but anyway, uh, are known to affect the cervix and cause cervical cancer in women. Uh, cervical cancer is the second most common uh, cancer in women worldwide. Uh, but ha it has become a whole lot less common in Canada due to a couple of things. One is the pap test. So the pap test shows precancerous cells, so treatment can begin early, sometimes even before cancer has developed. Um, and we also have a vaccine against many different uh, human papillomaviruses. So vaccines are now available to help protect teens and young adults from the main causing cancer, causing HPV types. Uh, so, uh, the American Cancer Society, so this is in America, not Canada, but they're very, very similar, recommends that uh, HPV vaccination works best when given uh, to boys and girls between the ages of 9 to 12. And if we're talking about cervical cancer, you might think, why would boys need to get vaccinated? Well, boys can become infected with HPV, and how do you think girls get infected with HPV from boys? So it's really, really important that everyone is vaccinated to prevent this virus from being passed. If I don't have it, I can't pass it to someone. And that is really, really key. Um, it is recommended that any children uh, or young adults ages 13 through 26 who have not yet been vaccinated um, uh, or who, who have not gotten all of their doses should get the vaccine as soon as possible. Vaccinations in younger adults will not prevent as many cancers as vaccinations of teens and children. So it's essentially what they're saying is it's more beneficial to get the HPV vaccine when you're younger. Uh, and as soon as you're 26, the American Cancer Society deems the risk of the vaccination to be greater than the benefit. There essentially is no benefit after 26. It's likely that you've been infected um, by HPV. Uh, not that you'll get cervical cancer. That's not what this is trying to say. Um, lot, most people infected with HPV do not get cancer, but it is a possibility and it is a risk factor. Another type of virus, the Epstein-Barr virus or EBV, uh, is a type of herpes virus. It is probably best known for causing infection, the infectious uh, disease called mononucleosis or mono or the kissing disease. Essentially, it can be passed through kissing, and that's why they call it that. It is very, very common. Uh, in addition to kissing, EBV can be passed from person to person by coughing, sneezing, sharing a drink, eating utensils, pretty much any bodily fluid. And actually, 
Most people in the United States are infected with EBV by the end of their teen years, though you might not get symptoms of mono unless you get a high dose of the virus. There is no vaccine for EBV, um, so don't worry about it too much. Nothing you can do. Um, but as with other herpes virus infections, um, you have that virus your entire life. So even though uh, people don't have any symptoms, uh, after the first few weeks, that virus will just stay there forever and it will in, uh, stay in certain white blood cells called B cells. Hey, we've talked about those. So this virus just stays in B cells and that's why so many people are infected with it pretty much by the fact, by the time you're a teen, um, you have got it. So it, because pretty much everyone has it and stays with it. Um, so because this virus infects B cells, People with this virus are more susceptible to lymphomas, which is cancer of the immune system. Uh, cancers of the mouth, throat, and stomach are also caused by EBV. But again, no vaccine for it. There's nothing that we can do about it currently, and it does not cause cancer in everyone who gets it. A very small number of people who get it get cancer. It's just another risk factor. And then we have hepatitis B and C. Uh, they, these are both types of liver infections. So note the hepat part of hepatitis. Hepat is part of the word which denotes the liver, so this is an infection of the liver. Or itis, which is inflammation of the liver. Uh, HBV uh, and HCV, hepatitis B, hepatitis C virus, can cause long-lasting long long damage to the liver, which can cause cancer over time. Um, so if you get these uh, viruses, they are, affect your liver, the DNA in your liver, and can cause liver, liver cancer. Hepatitis is passed through bodily fluids and through the sharing of needles. There is a vaccine against uh, hepatitis B, but not hepatitis C, uh, and there is really no guarantee of the effectiveness of vaccines in an individual case. We can have rates overall like 50% effective, 70% effective, 90% effective, but for an individual, there is no guarantee that a vaccine will be effective. Um, what I'd like you to do for the Your Job section is to create an informational poster that shows why it is important to get vaccinated against many different viruses, and how it can protect us against uh, it can protect uh, bleh, and how it can protect us and those around us. So it's really, really important that we kind of look at this in a societal sense, where it doesn't only protect us but every single person that we come in contact with. Uh, I believe after that, yes, you can hand in your booklet and complete the test. And I thank you for watching, everyone. I appreciate it, and I will see you soon. Thank you so much.